again, Don. All right. How's everybody doing? Are you all sufficiently uncomfortable? It's great. We're winding this thing down, so uh, appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Hope everybody's relatively comfortable. Uh, is the, is the um, temperature okay in the room? It's a funny thing about the temperature. Uh, yes! It's weird because, you know, you know, I, I love air conditioning, but it, it's weird because why, why do they call it air conditioning when they're cooling the air, but heating when they're heating the air? It's like, should we start calling it air conditioning and air deconditioning? Thanks a lot. All right, here's your final performer for the evening. He puts the cog in cognitive distortion. <laughs> Mr. Corey Marshall! <laughs> Mr. Corey Marshall! Giddy up. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Corey Marshall. Um, first, I'm going to say thank you for the opportunity and putting the show together and for everybody coming out supporting live comedy and live entertainment. Um, appreciate Don playing the guitar and everything. Let's just give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. He didn't tell me. Um, he didn't tell me I'd be performing in a microwave. <laughs> like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> the whole night I was wondering who's gonna be the person. To, what is this butt? What is this? <laughs> Can I push this? Can I push this? <laughs> I'm just not doing like the emergency alarm. You know what I'm saying? This is like a real stupid place to put it. <laughs> when you all getting robbed downstairs, get to the alarm. <laughs> what are you doing? I gotta use the bathroom. I'm doing nothing. Nothing at all. Just stretching in the microwave. Nothing at all. <laughs> It's like a, it's like a civil rights meeting or something. It's, it's, I gotta help me get to the north. You gotta help me get to the north. I can't stand it down here. I keep singing, oh my, bro. You don't understand what it's like. Thank you for letting me out, sir. <laughs> To be honest, when you first started, I wasn't convinced you could really play. <laughs> so you stopped the CD and I was like, oh, okay. He looked like he was just kind of... i play one. <laughs> he believed me. It's pretty good. Better than what I could do. This is a nice place. I like this place. I never came here before, man. This is a real cool spot. I love the pictures on the wall. It's just... <laughs> something about that picture scares me, though. Right? Like, little girl with her dress up and she just looks like, oh, no, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> but the thing, the thing about it was he, she had to stay like that the whole entire time he was painting the picture. <laughs> She's like, where's the responsible adult in that house? <laughs> Like, just keep the skirt up, darling. Just keep it up. <laughs> just keep it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, pedophile painting. <laughs> and this paint looks like the pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> and self-portrait. <laughs> I'm going to draw my own wedding poster. <laughs> They never get it right. <laughs> never get it right. <laughs> this picture, I don't know, looks like, like a kid. He, he started off painting mommy and then, yeah, I'm going to change it to daddy. No, back to mommy. No, Mr. Carter. Giddy up. The guitar can not fit in the picture. This is, this is amazing, man. Well, appreciate it, man. Uh, my name is Corey Marshall. Um, I'm not really a comedian. I've <laughs> uh, uh, been doing comedy for a while, man. I'm, I'm having a great time meeting people and just um, the Richmond comedy scene and just the support of comedy is a real good thing. One thing that um, I kind of always you know, tell people was like, before I started doing comedy, I didn't think I'd be doing it because as a child, I, used to, I, I still do it. You may catch it. I stuttered as a child. I had a real speech impediment. 
and it really prevented me from talking. And that's one of the things that I never did. I never talked as a child. And um, you hear about the lady and one of the the bitch, whatever. But um, <laughs> seriously, and, and people laughed at me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> and then so it, it was, you know, amazing that I'm doing comedy now. And so I like, you know, going around like doing like talks to like different schools and stuff like that, and you know, telling kids, you know, the kids that study, you know, don't be um. I guess intimidated by whatever your handicap is and things like that. So it's been a good thing. I just really enjoy comedy. Um, one of the things that um, I do talk about is stuttering. And stuttering is kind of hard to explain if you don't have it. You know, I guess the best way I can explain it is stuttering is like verbal constipation. You know? <laughs> like no matter how hard you push or blow, those words ain't coming out. <laughs> And like it kicks up when you really like when you least expect it. You know what I'm saying? Like I could be at like McDonald's one day and I, I want to order Big Mac. And uh, see, for some reason, <laughs> I can't say Big Mac, so I got to play it off. You know, I don't want her to know that I stutter. So I'm like, okay, let me get a a bit. <laughs> let me get a. <laughs> <laughs> and then the manager, she was going on, and she comes behind the counter, and she was like, Be nice to him. He's, he's retarded. <laughs> I'm not retarded. Give me them chicken nuggets. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Don't laugh too hard. It might fall out the window. <laughs> and then they say, I did it. <laughs> I pushed him. And um, one of the things, you know, I, I really enjoy everybody. I, I'm serious about getting me out of here. Um, Virginia is, is, is very funny. Uh, one thing, you know, I'm from New York originally. And one thing, you know, that um, I noticed, we have similarities, New York and Virginia. Like when you're driving down the street at night, and those um, things on the side of the road, they jump out in front of your car. They're the crazy homeless people. <laughs> Y'all are very creative down here. This one guy had a sign that said, economy sucks. And then I'm like, oh, wow. How is the economy affecting him? He's homeless already. And then I thought about it and I was like, okay, it's, it's basic Negronomics. Um, you know, people aren't buying homes like they used to, so they can't buy large appliances like they used to, so they can't throw the boxes into the alleys like they used to. <laughs> so he really doesn't have nowhere to stay. You know? well, I'm really sensitive about homes, but for real, you know, um, there was a time where we didn't have a home, so it's kind of things that kind of stuck out of my mind. Seriously, no joke, don't laugh. But, um, and so, you know, I felt bad for him, so, you know, I rolled down the window and I gave him five, you know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> rolled up, you know, locked the doors, I didn't want to, you know, hop in my car, you know, thanks for the ride, let me give you a ride. <laughs> I try and notice things like in Virginia, like a lot of people hold very strong the stereotypes down here, and as far as everywhere, you know, like for instance, you know, I have like a, I'm not going to say a racist moment, it's just a very revealing moment, I learned something about one of my best friends, he's Caucasian. We was in a restaurant, and the waitress comes up to me and says, barbecue sauce, right? I got you. She walks away. <laughs> That's the okay part, you know? <laughs> My friend sitting next to me, he's like, Corey, that was racist. How is she just gonna assume you want barbecue sauce with your chicken? I was like, you think she's racist? I didn't even order chicken. Beauty <laughs> up. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> when um, I, I kind of tell the story, just kind of background from my family, we have a very comical family, some things happen. My mother is very comical, and our crazy one. Um, this past Christmas, <laughs> I was, you know, I never get excited for Christmas because this past Christmas, she gets up like 4 30 in the morning to go shopping on Black Friday. And the only place she goes is Goodwill, you know. <laughs> And it's like, wow, well, I don't know why, do you, you know, I thought every day was Black Friday at Goodwill. It's just, you know, it's like, Christmas morning, it's like, I'm never excited. It's like, oh, you got me a sweater, mother, yeah. You got me a sweater last year. In fact, you got me the same sweater last year. I'm trying to get rid of stuff, you keep bringing it back. Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> Pretty good. And um, my father, he's a funny guy, too. He just found out what the letters L-O-L mean. He thought it meant lots of love. <laughs> and I'm glad I found it out because like for a long time I thought my pops were like a crazy sense of humor. <laughs> like he sent me a text message, he'd be like, son, sorry to hear about your divorce. LOL. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks, Pops. <laughs> <laughs> Take your medicine. Yeah. <laughs> but I am divorced. Make me I'm gonna jump out the window at the end of my act. <laughs> you happy now, woman? <laughs> Bang on the concrete. That was so funny. <laughs> I am a joke. <laughs> yeah, but I am divorced. Um, we were. I got married kind of young, and we were immature. We didn't accumulate a lot of things over the course of our marriage. You know, it took us like two days, you know what I'm saying, to, to debate who gets the house and who gets the property, who gets the animals. So I was like, you know what, if it means that much, just keep the farm bill account. <laughs> I hope a coyote sneaks from your farm and eats your chickens. <laughs> it's not that important, really. It's not that important. But I am dating. That's like a, a good thing. And for some reason, I'm like attracting like older women, which is cool. We know. Hint, hint. <laughs> to the lovers in the house. So. But uh, but this is a white lady in particular. I'm not really sure I can call her a cougar. You know, because I don't think cougars live that long. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she's like an aggressive turtle. You know, <laughs> she's just slow. She has a hump. She's green. She has real soft skin, though. Shit, I love her to death, man. It's my boo. It's my baby. My baby boo. <laughs> my boo boo baby. <laughs> Take your medicine. <laughs> and, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> I have like a lot of stuff, you know. I don't, don't want to, you know, I know I'm on the. This light is hot. <laughs> It is really like a microwave over here. Like, I thought it wasn't this dark when I got up here. I was like you at one point. <laughs> I said, you think it is? I had to take a sip. I'm taking it off my hat. I could have taken it with some dignity. It looks so sheepish. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna stupid. <laughs> One of the things that um that I kind of always like to tell um I'm not, how much time do I have? Am I almost done? Yeah, all right, I mean, you serious? Don't come up and try to push the button. <laughs> <I'm a seat. laughs> One of the things that um I forgot to write down. Or maybe I just can't read my hand right. Not at all. Um, my grandmother, she recently moved in with my parents, and she has dementia. And that's not funny or anything, I know, but the thing she does is funny. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, it's like at, at one time, you know, we was kind of, do I have to speak in the microphone? <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't really sat in the back of me. You know, we discussed, who has a joke? <laughs> that was funny. You are funny. Yes, you are. Yes, you are funny. Yes, yes. Who else has a joke? <laughs> That's great. You know, this is so, uh, so comfortable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. My name is Corey Marshall, and I am a comedian. <laughs> yes, I tell jokes all the time. I can't stop. <laughs> I have a problem. I need help. Thank you. Comedy support. <laughs> I still want to go to the north. <laughs> can't reach it from here. I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, but um, what, you know, I don't know when we found out that she has dementia, but you know, like she speaks real proper, and like wherever on the phone. Talking to her, it's like, I'll say, Grandma, she says, what are you? She'll say, Corey, what'd you do today? And I'll say, Grandma, me and Kelly went to the store. And she'll be like, no, Kelly and I went to the store. I'm like, no, Grandma, me and Kelly went to the store. <laughs> She's like, no, Corey, Kelly and I went to the store. <laughs> and I'm like, Grandma, me and Kelly went to the store. Stop! No, stop! She's like, Corey! Kelly and I went to the store and I had to start crying. Ah! I'm going to take your medicine. <laughs> and then, and then they keep it no, she just speaks proper. So now I feel really bad, you know, that I don't know if she's just playing with us or if she really has dementia. Because, like, all right, for instance, like we're sitting down and she's telling those stories, you know, she's very historic. 
So she's telling those stories, you know, about, you know, our ancestry and things like that and how our people can move on boats. And then she starts naming those boats. You know, like the Denta, <laughs> <laughs> and the Starship Enterprise. Really, Grandma? Part of the slave trade? And when I, the kid said it was on the ship, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. That's <laughs> the connection. <laughs> it was also a reading rainbow, too. <laughs> 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 You know, and then she goes on with more stories about, you know, um, about how she used to march down the streets with historic figures holding picket signs and things like that. And it's like, no, that was the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like SpongeBob and Snoopy. You know? It wasn't Martin Luther King or anything like that. And then I remember this one story. She, she, she's very, you know, animated. She, man, that's a bad word. Forget I said that. Straight up from the tape. <laughs> Keep it flowing. Um, <laughs> she, she was telling stories you know, about this baby who's going to be born and he's, he's, he's going to have like special abilities and he's going to save people you know, from out of darkness and bring them into the light. And she was talking about Harry Potter. But you know, um, one, this is a true story, not really, but this, um, <laughs> this very did happen for the sake of the But um, <laughs> you know, um, she's at my parents' house. And she's watching TV. And she says, you know what? I want to get a Nintendo Wii. And then I'm like, okay. My father's like, we're not going to get this lady a Nintendo Wii. You know? <laughs> this is the same lady that thinks the vacuum cleaner is a baby elephant. <laughs> she's like vacuuming up peanuts and stuff. <laughs> all right, so, all right, here's what we do. <laughs> we're not going to get her a Nintendo Wii. I'm smart. I think I'm smart. What I do is I get a two remote control to the television. And then I say, Grandma, we got you the weed. I said, this is the new one. You can have any game you want. You know, turn channels, you know, if you turn on SpongeBob and she's having, you know, swim through the water and whatever. <laughs> if you want to play sports, you turn to ESPN. You know, you want to um, build something, you watch HGTV. You want to shoot somebody, turn to BET. <laughs> you know, and it, so it backfired on us on this one time, you know. Because one time I, I'm going to see, home to see my parents. I walk in my grandma's room. And for some reason, she had was was watching UFC, you know, like the fighting thing, right? And so she's standing in the room, naked, but not really. She has on like the, the remote control, and she has on like a, a purple cummerbund. <laughs> it was a sports bra, but it was a cummerbund, <laughs> pretty much. And you know, she's doing the moves and stuff, and, the thing, and I'm like. Come on. I'll go to hug her, and she like kicked me in my chest, and I'm like, oh my god. So like, I'm on the floor, like, oh. And she's like leaning over me, so I'm like trying to change the channel, you know, to something else. I'm like, Grandma, you know, Kelly and I went to the store. You love me, Grandma. <laughs> That's not really how that story happened. <laughs> um, she just hugged me. And we had a, a great time and ate Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> and old people love Skittles. They really do. They just know that. Yeah. Yes, they do. Um, I, I'm pretty much about to go. I had a great time tonight, man. Um, I hope y'all continue doing this. Uh, I had a real good time. Um, I did have an in interesting tech story about a cell phone. That's how I went about my father with the LOL thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I have another one. The other day, um, I am texting my mother. I have a new Android phone, and I love it. You know, I hear everybody talking about, oh, the automated texting is crazy. You know, it finishes your words for you. I see what you're saying. The other day, I'm texting my mother. I'm sending her a text message. I really miss my crock pot. But that's not what I sent. <laughs> Before I realized, I looked up and I said to my mother, I really miss my crack pipe. <laughs> and so I'm like, no, you don't send this to your mother. You, know what I'm you don't do this. And so I'm thinking like a response, like, I'm just joking, you know what I'm saying? But before I could respond, she sends back, me too. And they're like, oh, this. You know, get you. That's great. But um, man, my name is Corey Marshall, and I had a great time, and I hope you all enjoyed.
so that's it for the comedy tonight. I'd like to thank Corey, Chris, and Nathan, and all of you for coming out. We're going to have Don continue with a few numbers. Uh, in closing comments, I always like to leave people with something to think about. Uh, so in the uh, mortal words of the dear leader that was uh, apparently on acid this morning, um, I'd like to say, people of Zawe, stop your children. The pills will kill. Leave the country calm. Good night. <laughs> Mr. John Wade. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Thanks for letting me play for you uh, today. Uh, I want to play a song that I, <clears throat> just to say I wrote because I make it up, you know, as I go. Uh, but I want to tell you a story of how I wrote this song when I was in uh, you know, Uncle Sam's Marine Corps down in Mexico, and I... Too much reverb on that. <laughs> I see, I see. I was down in Mexico, and uh, I went to this restaurant get something to eat, and right beside the restaurant was this bullfighting arena, and um, I didn't, I never went to the uh, bullfighting, I went, never went to see the bullfight, but I went to the restaurant a lot, and I, I went in there first time, and sat down, and the waiter came over and asked me what uh, I wanted, and the guy at the next table to me had this uh, plate of huge meatballs covered with mushrooms and gravy and it looked so good and smelled good. I said, I'll have what he's got. And uh, they said, well, that's the, um, that's bull testicles and that's the <laughs> special of the day. We only have one set every day. We get it from the bullfight after they killed the bull and they bring them over and that's our special of the day. If you come early tomorrow, then we can, we can have a, a set for you. So I came back early the next day, went in, sat down, and I said, I'll have that special of the day. And they brought it out and I ate one and it was pretty good. And uh, the waiter came over and said, uh, um, hey, how do you like it? I said, it's good. But I, I noticed that they're a lot smaller than the ones that the guy had yesterday. And he said, well, sometimes the bull wins the fight. <laughs> <laughs> No, really. But they had this bull. <laughs> what happened? They had this bull named El Toro. And I wrote this song called El Toro the Bull. They said Boo. El Toro the Bull was a very famous bull. He was huge and he was he was magnificent. And he was so magnificent they didn't want to fight him and kill him. So they just kept him and before they have a fight. They let him run around the arena and snort and everything, and, and everybody would yell, El Toro, El Toro. And when I'm playing this song, when I go like this, I want you to yell, El Toro, El Toro. And, and then they would do the bullfight. Well, one day, they decided to let El Toro fight. And El Toro was an old bull, and he had watched many bullfights. And he figured out why the bull always lost, because the bull always went for the cape, and the man would just step sideways and stick the sword in him. And uh, he, he, he figured that out. So they let El Toro in the fight. He went straight for the matador. <laughs> and, and he wiped him out. <laughs> and, and so that became the legend of El Toro.
polite, but I appreciate you being polite also. <laughs> okay, I'll do one more and let you sing along with this one. My G string slip. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> I took my double down the Madam Root. You know that gypsy with the gold cap too. She got a pad, a dirty gold and vine, selling little bottles of what? No person. No person. No person. That's it. <laughs> I've been this day since 1956 She looked at my palm and she made a magic sign She said, what you need is The potion on the mind That's it <laughs> She bent down and turned around and gave me a wink She said, I'm gonna fix it up right here in the sink It felt like heaven down, it looked like it needed Thank you, God bless you all. I hope to see you again soon.